Hello and welcome to episode four of Anime on Draft. I'm your host, Rolando, and this week our co-hosts, Alec. Hello. And Drew. Hello. We'll be here to discuss the Lagunitas Lucky 13 Red Ale, as well as Attack on Titan episode 29 and Sakura Quest episode 3. Um, so why don't we just roll right into the weekly pairing? Um, I chose this week's beer, the Lagunitas Lucky 13 Red Ale. And, a um, Mondo Red Ale. Oh, sorry. The mo- it's a Mondo <laughs> Large Red Ale. That is what it says on the box. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It is a limited yes. release. Alec, I think you said it was available which seasons of the year? I think it's uh, spring and, or yeah, fall and summer, spring and summer. I, think I know summer for sure. And, summer. and fall, fall and yeah. summer. Yeah. All right. So just in time for summer, you can pick up this lovely beer on your store shelves, most likely at BevMo, because that's where I got it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm assuming that's where the both of you got it as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got it at BevMo. It was the last one in the seasonal section, so it actually apparently does sell out. All right. Well, that's not too uncommon with Lagunitas beers. Um, I know they're cappuccino stout. Um, that That sells out really fast as well. Yeah, outside of Northern California, that one's hard to find. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Bob. why don't we uh, pour these out and uh, get started on a review? Pour it out for the homies? All pour right. one out. Pour one out into my glass so I can drink it. Fuck you the know, homies. I've, I have actually <laughs> had this um, in a glass for about five minutes, and the head is still just sitting there. It's like about, like, you know, one inch thick. It's pretty. Mine uh, fizzled out a little bit. But it's kept, I mean, I had, uh, I had a good like inch and a half when I poured it. It's fizzled to maybe half an inch for me. So it still keeps a, it does it's keep a, a pretty solid. It's head. got a lot of head retention for sure. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very, also su- sticks to the side. Yeah. A lot. Um, it doesn't have as much legs as the, what was the one last week? The, the shipwreck. The mission. Yeah. The shipwreck. But, uh. It's it's still got that uh, very uh, what is it the what what's the foam on top of the espressos? It's just foam. I think it's <laughs> just foam. Milk foam. It looks yeah, like that. It looks like yeah. that. That is kind of the color. It is. Yeah. Yeah. My my clean. head. Uh, yeah. My head kind of fizzled out as well, but. Um, the color is beautiful. All these mm-hmm. uh, these red ales always have a be- really beautiful color. Really nice um, colors. Mm-hmm. Very fragrant as well. Mm-hmm. Not, very not, nice as, not as not as not as I don't know tasty smelling as the uh, the mission was last week, but it still it still smells very good. It's still very got that floral, floral smell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The hops the hops are there for Citrus sure. Citrus is there for sure. Let's mm. uh, let's take it's a real take bubbly. a take a swig. Do is it. yours are yours as like super bubbly? Mine is super bubbly. Mm-hmm. 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 A ton Ooh. of carbonation. It's nice when you when you drink it and you have the the foam this thick and it kind of just like slides down slowly mm-hmm. uh, along the edge of the edge of the cup. Yeah. The the carbonation you really do feel it. Mm-hmm. Um I did. It really hits your tongue. But it's not like a really carbonated soda. It's like more pleasing. It's like not big bubbles. It feels like small bubbles that just kind of like float on your tongue, if that makes sense. Right. It's a cool feeling. It's um, leaving me a little bit with that um, kind of hoppy aftertaste that you get with really strong IPAs, but it's I definitely like the, not as brutal as right. an IPA, especially like compared the back to last week. Yeah. yeah. Back, back of your tongue, um, the back of your teeth, uh, kind of mm-hmm. on your gums, you get I get this little bit of like hoppy lingering but it's mm-hmm. it's not as strong as uh, as our previous Definitely contender <laughs> right i can drink this one <laughs> good this one it's not the, it's not an ipa it's not too hoppy. But yeah it's still it's hoppy ale. but yeah. yeah we should we should mention though to uh the alcohol 8.8 percent uh, yes this is my volume um, uh for a bottle of this stuff so not something pretty... you're gonna want as a session beer in the middle of summer <laughs> i mean yeah. unless you're looking to get just 
done <laughs> very quickly, then yeah, do it as a session beer. But your session is going to be about an hour long. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So look yeah. look for us uh, at the end of the show to be a little bit uh, sh- wasted because uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna drink a little bit more of this one than we are of the mission. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will. That's for sure. <laughs> Seeing as how I like sipped a little bit and then gave it away. Is there any is there anything to read on the bottle or the Yeah. Um, or I got the box. The here. box. Yeah. So, go ahead. Burr, 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 All right. burr, burr, burr. <laughs> From the first day of the first mash of the first recipe in the first brew house in the first space to these coordinates on the cone of space time. We have worked hard to walk in the footsteps of our hero brewers, Chico's brewer of California's best pale ale the noble brewer of the planet's only legal steam beer, and Oregon's rebel brewer from Newport. Now we have found our own voice as brewers, but our admiration for the great ones has not dimmed one bit. If we, well, if we walked well down the hero's path, perhaps we too have been an inspiration for others. Beer is a Bronze Age business, and we feel honored to leave our footprints on its path into history, at the same time leaving our flavors on your buds. Obey those buds. <laughs> Thanks for your trust over the years, and we hope you enjoy the specially brewed high gravity Auburn offering. Beer speaks. People mumble. Cheers. I, I have to that's, say that's probably one of the best written like uh, little passages on a on a beer box I've I've heard or seen before. Yeah, it also says on the box that this was first brewed on their thirteenth anniversary, so that's why mm-hmm. it's the lucky thirteen. Um, yeah, I was ale. reading about it when you when you mentioned that this is the one you were gonna go for um, for this week, and and it was something like they they brewed it on um, on the thirteenth or whatever, and the, but it was so popular they decided to make it yearly. So, yeah. well, and it was in uh, two thousand six, I guess, and that was their first year that they were actually profitable as a brewery. So that's mm-hmm. that's pretty cool, pretty exciting for them. Mm-hmm. It's, um, yeah, nice story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something to should All right, we rate so, these guys? Yeah, what do you uh, um, actually? What do you guys think of uh, the flavors you're getting from it first? Um, it's good. It's citrusy. It's refreshing. It's drinkable. Um, I w- I wish I would have had a little bit more head on mine. Um, it kind of fizzled out, but um, I enjoy the carbonation. Um. Citrus, like I said, comes through. It's not overbearingly hoppy. Um, yeah, there's <clears throat> definitely hops for me. Um, I got, I get malty. Yeah, mm-hmm, malt for sure. Malt for flavor. sure. Um, I think they get that from. Uh, I, do you know what kind of cast they they put these in or anything like that to get the color or? I have no idea. Uh, I'm not sure. Alec, do you? I don't know anything. Know no, I don't know anything about their brewing process for this. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I can, I can definitely get the the malt and the hops. It's a mm-hmm. it's a very nice balance, um, mm-hmm. especially for one that is a fairly high um, alcohol content. Mm-hmm. I don't get a lot of alcohol punch with it, like the f- alcohol flavor, which is nice because that's not always my favorite flavor. Um, it, I mean, it's there, but it's not like overpowering or overbearing on your palate or anything. It's it, a, but, yeah. yeah. It's a nice. It might be a little beer. smoky, mm-hmm. but yeah, I think that's really subtle. I'd, I'd be curious to see if they if they put it in a barrel because um, that's what's going to add the smoke. That's what's you know changing the color of the beer and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So be interesting right. to to look that up and figure that out. But cool. we'll have Overall, to go take a tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we will. <laughs> you just have to go over to Chico. Um, <laughs> well, uh, why don't you start us off on the review, Alec? All right. Um, well, you know, the color is like red ales are, are out of beers are by far my favorite color of any beer out there. They're just always really, really like good looking beers. The head is always a nice contrast to the actual like color of the beer itself. Um, in terms of the smell, it's great. It smells good. Um, look is great. Um, I enjoy the flavor. It's on the hoppy side for me, so this is kind of like at my line where uh, for for hoppiness. Um, like I could drink a whole one of these and another, but I think after two, I'd probably be drunk. But besides that, I would probably be um, there would be too much uh, 
hoppiness for me. So mm. I'm going to go ahead and I'll probably give it a, a 3.5 to a 4, probably closer to a 4, so I'll say 4 for me. Um, it's just really good. Um, and then if people like that bitterness, then this is something they're definitely going to like um, a lot. So, Drew, uh, you want to give us your rating? Yeah, um, really good. It's getting close to that IPA flavor that I really enjoy. Um I like the carbonation, like I said. I like uh, the malty notes. I like the smokiness. Um, wish I got a little bit more out of the head and stuff like that. But other than that, it was it's it's a good drinkable beer. Something I I definitely enjoy um, in terms of flavor profile and stuff like that. I'll probably give it a four and a quarter. Um, really good uh, beer. Really drinkable. I'm probably gonna have two, maybe three of these uh, as. A, we go through the podcast, so I look forward to that. <laughs> good luck, sir. Um, good yeah. luck. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, super, super good beer. Cool. Uh, I was the one that chose this beer. I kind of um, just found found it on the shelf at Bevmo while looking around and was like, huh, this looks like it's an interesting beer. Um, I do agree with what you guys said. It's got a nice balance of hops and maltiness. Um, the color is very nice. Um the creamy head um, sits nice, especially while you're drinking it fresh out of the, out of the bottle into a, into a glass. Um, uh, In terms of the complexity of the flavors, it's, you know, it's got a nice balance to it, but I don't necessarily, you know, think of it as like, oh man, this is the red ale to beat all red ales, but it is definitely very good. So I'm going to give it a like 3.75 ish mm-hmm. in that range. It's good. That's kind of what I was thinking, but I wasn't sure if I should have done a quarter. <laughs> yeah, it's it's good, but um it's definitely it's definitely not like the best red <laughs> ale I've had, but uh it's it's up there. Right on. All right. Cool. So now that we've finished talking about the Lagunitas Lucky 13 Red, why don't we move on to our main anime topics for today? So let's, let's start it. off with um, Attack on Titan, episode 29. Um, Alec, you want to start us off? I know uh, we get a lot about Emir in this episode. Um, yeah, we we definitely got a ton from her. This, this episode kind of... Uh, it, it definitely threw me for a little bit of a loop because there were a lot of things I was expecting and I didn't get those. And then I got things that I was not expecting at this point. And I was like, uh, I was expecting uh, Reiner to transform. Mm. And I kept seeing things along the way, like when he gets bit and, and just when when uh, when he's going to attack the Titan, I'm like, he's going to do it now. When he's going to jump out the window, I'm like, he's going to do it now. Like, I just keep thinking, <laughs> when's he going to do it? When's he going to do it? And then, like, by the end of the episode, she fucking jumps off the top of the top of the castle, cuts her hand and turns into a Titan. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, yeah. in my notes, I said I have in caps and turns into a Titan exclamation <laughs> exclamation. So, yeah, um, especially it, that bait shocking. from the end of the last episodes preview where you see the hand in front of Reiner you think he's gonna bite it like Aaron Mm -hmm. it's actually just the Titan's hand (laughs) yeah oh man it was dude I was I was so expecting him to transform and then uh it it really threw me that one threw me like I was I was like so sure that I wasn't gonna get shocked by anything this episode but yeah I have it labeled in my notes as baited (laughs) (laughs) baited and baited just like League yeah, right. It was it was a su- yeah. super good episode. Um, I mean, we get we get a lot more like what Alec talked about. Um, I I was kind of disappointed that we didn't get more of Reiner's backstory. I mm-hmm. think I mentioned it last week, but um, I'm I'm curious to see you know a little bit more about Reiner, um, Berthold, and and what's going on with them. So we I got think a little bit of us. it. Yeah, they yeah, are, yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know, we we got a little bit of it, but um, I was I was definitely expecting more. Um, but I guess I can kind of go through kind of what happened uh, at the beginning of the episode. We have our little two hour flashback um, and Connie kind of goes back and what we were saying confirms that that lying down Titan, the blonde one uh, in the village was his mother. And Ymir's like, stop being an idiot. Like, wh- what the fuck are you saying? 
Um, so kind of confirming our suspicions there. Um, but we don't really find out or get any closure on that. Um, we get a little bit of a foreshadowing with the Amir and Reiner's conversation. Um, they're saying like, this is going to be my last meal and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So very foreboding, um, stuff like that. What was interesting though, and I, I am curious to, uh, to hear what you guys think about it is, um, when there's like, uh, scrounging around for food and stuff, she finds that can with the strange lettering and she can, and read she pulls it. that out mm-hmm. and she's like, Oh yeah. Um, this is, I forgot what fish it was. It was a herring. It's, Oh, yeah, herring. Is, yeah, an eight red fish. herring. <laughs> yeah, that means that nothing. That's exactly what I thought as well. Just yeah. like, right. oh, they're trying to really fucking go all in on that. <laughs> right. So they, they pull that out. Um, I think we've seen that lettering before, and I might just be pulling this out of my ass, but I think we've seen that lettering before. Something to do with the the basement and Aaron's father's research, um, and similar to that, or maybe it's in one of the endings when they're doing all that, you mm. know, strange uh, imagery and on the tablet or on the stone tablets. And the stuff alcohol like that. had it too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. They and so it's like. It. Yeah, it's so it's like is this castle is obviously significant um, because mm-hmm. of that because there's all that and stuff. I, in it kind of got me thinking, like, because there was that in the middle of the episode. You know, they have that break where it says something about the episode, mm-hmm. and it was talking about Ka- Utgard Castle, and it was saying I, it's heavily defended, but like, what were they defending against? So yeah, I, th- I have it. I have it written down. It's like built with cannons that possess uh, a substantial defensive power for an unknown enemy back mm-hmm. when it was built. So it's like. Who were they fighting? So I was kind of thinking, is this like older humans and there was a civil war and then they Mm -hmm. turned into the Titans first or something? Or, you know, that's kind of where I was going with that because it's a lost dialect, you know, so it's probably a lost faction of humanity or something prior to the moving into the city, maybe just before they were having infighting and then they became, you know, they turned people into Titans to try and force everyone into this, into the, you know, the inside the walls and so you yeah know, a lot of speculation i know can be in in the past too they talk about like uh races of humans going in stick like mikasa is supposed to be japanese uh, but everybody else is like anglo or white in some mm-hmm. way um so it could be a, She's a half. dialect yeah it could be like a dialect or form of you know not necessarily japanese but a language of a of a race that is now extinct mm-hmm. because of the titans uh so there there's you know interesting parallels to that um, going forward, but that was yeah, that was or, interesting for me to see. I actually think um, because we are going to get more into Ymir and um, Krista's backstory next week, I actually think because Ymir can read it, that this is somehow related to how um, Pastor Nick in the last episode was talking about um, Krista and how mm-hmm, she's definitely. somehow related to all of these like titans in the walls kind of thing. So I actually think that possibly she is from a noble family or even the royal family before that mm-hmm. could have been in charge of Utgard Castle, you know, um, and, and has these I might, I, transforming ab- abilities. Yeah. I might be biased too, but something about Kinpatsu hair, blonde hair, um, there's always some sort of association with royalty uh, in that way, especially females. Um with uh, blonde hair tend to be up in royalty. I mean, we have Armin who's also blonde, but something about Krista, you know, screams to me royalty or like wanting to be protected in some way. I don't know if you guys agree with that or not. Well, Amir is last episode. Amir is like, she thinks Amir is just there to protect her because of her, her family name. So like there's something going on there, you know, about or her, her, her and she's, they kind of, yeah. <laughs> throw it out there at the end too when they say right before the when they're introducing the next episode it's Krista casts cast aside the persona she's kept for so long so you know it's kind of is she because right now she's going around as a soul a nobody soldier you know right uh, so is she going to come out as so I kind of put that is she going to come out as somebody more important to the world or is she going to transform too and I, I think right. she can transform as well because there was that um that conversation uh, Ymir had right before um, she cut her hand and turned into a Titan. And she she training. was just saying, yeah, about mm-hmm. their training. And she wants her to live a life she's uh, she's proud of. And then sh- she said one other thing, and I just had it in my head, and now it's gone. Um, but it was, um, 
I know they make a promise to each other. Yeah, um, that yeah. and that's that's foreshadowed. the The name of the episode, I think, is important too. Historia is mm-hmm. the name of episode thirty, so maybe a little bit more backstory um, in regards to that, or the royalty sort of stuff that we were talking about too. Um, yeah, I wrote it, down maybe important. just who is Krista, just what is she. Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I heard that in my notes. Yeah, um, it had that kind of feeling to me at the very end of it. So. But I thought that we got a lot of um, character development from Emir in this episode, whether mm-hmm. um, she is like rising a death flag or anything, because like she transformed into that little, that smaller Titan in the preview. Yeah, she's tiny. Um, that she reminds me of really uh, Blanca from Street Fighter. Yeah, <laughs> she's scrappy. <laughs> she's scrappy. But uh, she she does say pretty, pretty wise words to Krista after mm-hmm. we see the rest of the senior scouts get killed off. She's kind of like, don't use their deaths as a reason to go out and die yourself. Like, because Mm -hmm. Krista keeps like trying to go off with this, you know, like noble, Mm -hmm. um, attitude that like, she must sacrifice herself, you know, to, for, for her friends and humanity and stuff where it's like, Emir is like, no, you like, don't use other people's deaths. They like risk their lives to save you don't use that as an excuse to go out and just throw it away yourself. I thought that was pretty, it was pretty wise from her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She said a lot of, th- that's actually the the part that you just reminded me of what I remember. She said something like, um, you're not like Connie, you're like us or something like that. And so I was kind of curious does, um, yeah. Is Connie like, cause she was the, the way she phrased it. She made it sound like she's like you, She's like Reiner, you know, but she's not like Connie. So I'm thinking like, is she a Titan and Connie's not is in the end, is Connie not able to transform like his mom possibly oh, did, but you know, I think the, you might be reading a little too much into that because the way she says it is you're not like Connie and us in the aspect that they're, they fear for their lives and are, um, afraid to die, whereas like she has that attitude where it's like I must sacrifice myself. So like she's not fearing her own for her own life. I think mm-hmm. that's and maybe I missed the phrase in in front of it. Yeah. Reiner's kind of like that too, in that like he doesn't really fear anything. He's right. there to protect it, protect the bros. Um, he doesn't care that you know he gets his arm fucked up, um, stuff like that. He's he's there. He was gonna to, throw his life away to uh, exactly save to them. protect everybody. It's because of that um, one flashback we get of him. I think. Well, I think I think uh, I think him. too. Like he's willing to throw everything on the line and even risk showing that he is a hybrid by throwing himself out the window and maybe you know exposing that um um, because he he seems prepared to you know kind of sacrifice it all um which is why i was kind of sad in this episode to see that you know he didn't he wasn't the one who transformed it was ymir but still 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 uh you know kind of the same same sort of deal um I, one other thing I wanted to point out was um, the Annie and um, Reiner comparison from Connie. Um, you know, he says that even though Annie's kind of this bitch who kind of betrayed us or we don't really know, um, they're similar. Um, I forget exactly what he says, but, um, you know, Reiner's here to save me. He saved me like Annie did um, mm-hmm. by, you know, the Titan almost got him and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, and Annie did the same thing. So it's like they're, they're maybe all looking out for humanity. We just don't know the alternative or right. ulterior motives. Um, um forward. I think, uh, it was kind of good that Reiner didn't transform this episode because if he is the Titan in the OP and he's like that big giant, like Titan, um, I think that waiting, I, they're going to like, re- they're going to reveal him in a way that's more epic right. and it'll be more exciting having him come out and be like, you know, just pop out in Titan form and start fucking shit up Mm -hmm. right now. Like, you know, she jumped out and she's this little Titan. She's being all scrappy and wrecking people. But I think when you get like a giant Titan or a Titan who's supposed to be, you know, like huge, it, it, it'll just come out really epic. So I'm actually really excited for when he, when he, uh, transforms now because they waited on this one. Right. 
A couple things I want to point out before we move on, um, not that they're necessarily important to the episode or anything. Uh, number one, Bay Titan died. Um, you get, you know that that Titan that gives you that look. He oh, yeah. he got killed in this <laughs> episode, killed. so I'm, I'm I'm sad about that. Um, we got we got the epic uh, crystal legs when she makes the uh, the tourniquet and then the sling for Reiner. So we get to got a, oh, yeah. get a little and taste he says, of that. I I, I must marry her. her. Got to yeah, marry yeah. her. Yeah. <laughs> That was that was really funny. <laughs> so so that was good. And then um, the last thing, a little bit more on the uh, important side, the Beast Titan when he's like throwing rocks and screaming and stuff like that, it summons mm-hmm. more Titans. So it's mm-hmm. like getting like back Annie. to that like platoon sort of ideal that we talked about last week. He's maybe controlling them or has control over them. So kind of like something Annie to look too. out for. When yeah, she exactly. screamed in the forest. So exactly, exactly. So something, something significant there. Um, and again, being able to move at night. Yeah, he and stuff killed like that, two so. scouts. Just like he threw like mm-hmm. a couple of yeah. horses, and they just got instantly killed from impact. Mm-hmm. Well, like, I want to know. Away. Yeah. He killed the horses and he killed them. So it's like he he has some understanding about you know how the humans fight, which is, is super interesting. What I want to know is. He was on top of this wall, and when we saw him climbing, he wasn't carrying any, hor- any horses. And then at the top of the wall, he chucks a horse. Where did he get a horse? And why was I thought he was throwing rocks? The- I thought he was throwing rocks. He threw a no, horse he, once. He threw the a first horse once, one. and <laughs> then I think he threw a cannon. I think after that, and I'm like, where did he get a horse, dude? So. Did he like climb back down, bring it back up? Like, I fuck? was wondering that yeah. too. I was like, dude, what a g- what? what a fucking god, yeah, what a dude, god, dude. spawns horses. I think you're not supposed to read into it that much and, yeah. and wonder. I think you're just supposed to be like, damn, he's throwing stuff from the wall. But I was sitting here like. Where did he get a horse? Did he, like he's clearly not tall enough to reach down and grab one off the off the wall? But so maybe there know. were horses on the wall. That doesn't make yeah, any sense. What, no, that dude, doesn't make sense. Fu- yeah, no, dude, he's just a fucking wall. god. Yeah, maybe he, he kept spawns it in his horses. Pocket. He had a pocket. <laughs> he's got. A, he he kept it like tied up in his in his monkey hair. He's like, I'm just gonna tie you right there. Yeah. All right, boom. Let's or like climb this you know, wall like now. when when apes <laughs> they're like picking their hair for like bugs to eat. He just had horses around in his fur. <laughs> He's like, <"Burp." laughs> let me just pull that out. <laughs> that was ridiculous. All right. Good episode, though. Yeah. Good episode. It was. Good episode. I, it, it flipped a lot of stuff around for me, so I, I enjoyed it a lot. It's, it's I know people are going to... Yeah, I know people are going to be mad that this thing's only uh, 12, uh, 12 episodes, but if we could get more like consistent like 12 episodes and then take a season off and then come back for 12 more episodes, mm-hmm. I think it'll savor like the magic that this show has. Um, it's super addicting to watch, especially with the different things that they're um, alluding to. And then we get like one big revelation and then, you know, we move on for a while and then get another. Mm-hmm. So if if they could do that and stick with that and get, you know, consistent uh, releases of episodes, I'm not I'm not upset with. The, the and not make us wait format. another three years yeah. for another well, and episodes. <laughs> I felt like they some of the episodes were such a waste of the the twenty five uh, episode season for season um, one. It, some of the episodes felt rushed and stuff like that. But if we can get good, consistent quality, like the episodes that we're getting, I mean, minus episode two, fuck you, Sasha. Um, <laughs> If we keep getting you know good, consistent episodes like this, I'm I'm happy with the uh, the the twelve episode format. Okay, so uh, let's move on to Soccer Quest episode four or three. Sorry. Um, so in this episode, we've got a lot of you know reflection from Yoshino. She's um, trying to figure out what the real essence of Monoyama is after her nice television interview, where <laughs> they kind of go off script and grill her, ask her what she likes, what she exactly what she likes about Monoyama, and she doesn't really know anything about the town itself. So how she's supposed to be the queen of it. <laughs> it made um, me laugh when she said, I like the, the company culture. <laughs> and I was like, oh, right. God. I was like, cringe. Just like, you know, those typical, like, for, like you know, like, force-fed answers that don't really mean mm-hmm. anything. They're just, like, mm-hmm. reflexes. So, yeah. it, um, After 30 Drew, interviews. Um, what did you think about this episode? It was a good episode. We see the camaraderie of the girls again. Uh, everybody's, you know, coming together and uh, trying to boost the town's morale or whatever you want to call it. Um, good teamwork. Um, trying to repair this. Or uh, what I what I what I really noted was the disjunct between the old and the new. So you know we have the ways of the past and you know the 
the disjunct between you know the the older members of the town like the uh the head committee member um and the old woman who hates him and then you have like these younger kids um not only the five girls but the two younger dudes who work in the the uh the tourism bureau and just the total disjoint because their the communication between them isn't good um the new guys have um, old, or new ideas and the old are like, no, they're combating that. Let's fight this. Um, and we see that ultimate struggle um, kind of reach its pinnacle when they have to choose between uh, what was it? The um, the Cabra kid and the uh, Chupacabra. So, mm-hmm. again, old meets new. Um, and you even see the old of the Cabra kid. Uh, you know, it, it's a fucked up costume. They had to repair yeah. it, stuff like that. Um, and then like the new the Chupacabra <laughs> and stuff like that. So, the the disjoint between that and i think we're going to see moving forward that the old the old timers and stuff like that they're going to have less say in what happens in the town and the the new uh led by yoshino and the group of girls are going to have the ultimate say of what they're going to use to repair this town um or to repair you know the tourism and stuff like that and revitalize the town um so that was that was you know we're starting to see that transition which i think is, the bus think, driver um, is going to play a role going forward at some point because him, him and the, like, uh, the prince or whatever yeah he, he's gonna have a big role i think we met um kiosuke which is uh, maki's younger brother he might have some sort of role as well as that traveling fucking weirdo with the guitar i think the he's bard. gonna have some sort of role in yeah, this the yeah <laughs> but that, that's all i think about when i see him is he's a fucking bard <laughs> <laughs> um so alec um yeah. uh we do find out in this episode that um they initially created like a a kingdom of Cabra, um, mm-hmm. before it became the king of Chupacabra uh, right. as the the current uh, manager of the tourism board. Um, so willfully changed it to, and Cabra is a type of vegetable, a root vegetable that they're growing in Manoyama. Um, what did you think about finding out all of like the all Cabra kid stuff and like basically? how that ties into like Yoshino's speech later on. Um, what did I think about finding out it was Cobra kid and not Chupacabra kid thing <laughs> to begin with? Um, I, I, I think it made sense cause I don't know why if Japan, the, the Japanese government was making these like, uh, what, what did they call it? sub sub nations or whatever they, yeah. they called them. Um, I don't know why they would call one like, you know, the, the kingdom of Chupacabra when they're like Chupacabra is not even, <laughs> not even a, a, a Japanese, um, like myth or, or whatever you, you call it. Um, so, so it kind of made sense that there was another thing, but I, I, I kind of took it as the, the old man was, um, he really loves his town and he, he's like, it shows because he was constantly trying to, you know, come up with new ideas to bring in tourism when, Cabra kid in the kingdom of Cabra wasn't working out and he created that, you know, Chupacabra. And I think, um, the way I kind of see it is she's like, uh, the new, the, the main girl is the new version of that, that guy, you know, she's going to be the one kind of, um, um, what's the word? I don't know. I can't remember the word, uh, coming up with new ideas, you know? So, uh, kind of like what I was saying with the the disjoint between young and old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're like two of the same. She's like figuring out what she loves about the town. Whereas the old man just loves the town and we don't really know his reason. He just loves the town cause he loves the town. And so it's kind of like she's becoming the new old man, but as a young chick. So, you know, it's cool. Right. I like it. The and then we find it. out, you know, she's going around town asking people what exactly they like about mm-hmm. Manoyama and like how they can change it. And nobody no really, cares. really cares about that. They're just like, I don't yeah. care. Like, I like the town the way it is. And so it's kind mm-hmm. of like Drew is saying the old guard versus the new guard. Clearly, they like, no one's coming to the town. Like, they need to increase tourism. But at the same time, the people that live there, they're like, why do we need any outsiders to come in and butt in on our affairs? So mm-hmm. it's kind of like this clash of old versus young. Um outsiders versus insiders that kind of thing yeah 
they've kind of fallen into this lull where they've just kind of accepted it. You see, you, they talk to like mm-hmm. the bookstore owner and he's like, I just sell books to the, you know, the school kids who go here in 10 years. I'm probably not even going to be here anymore, but what can I do about it? Mm-hmm. So they've fallen into this false sense of like, I, I can't fix There's how it's going. Do, right? There's yeah. nothing I can do. I've accepted it, which all the girls and stuff like that, like, no, like we, we can fix this. Like we just need to put in the effort. We need to, you know, figure out um, how to draw these people here. What's good about our town. And we can, we can move on and make this, you know, successful again. So they're going to try to have to, or they're going to have to try to fight to break that mold that everybody has in the town because everyone's is in that role. They've accepted their fate sort of deal. Well, um, the one thing I did notice about the girls even is like the, the, they all like the town for their own reasons. So the the girl who was there, like she's born and raised there, she just loves the town because she likes you know the small town or whatever, um, and she wants everyone else to see how great it is, how beautiful you know it is. The other one likes it because it's not the city, and uh, you know they all have their own like ideas of what they like about it. So it's kind of good that you know they're they're coming together like that. But their ideas aren't even that concrete, you know. So I think all of them are going to have this kind of thing that the main girl is going through where they're like figuring out what exactly they love about the town and and mm-hmm. then that'll you know they'll use all of that together and they'll get a whole bunch of people to show up and they'll save the town. That's how it's going to end. And it's going right. to be super popular. They're going to have some big festival at the end and it's going to be super popular and they'll make a bunch of money. And then when I think moving it. moving on that a little bit more of a meta point, um, they've talked about this is going to be a two season show, so we'll probably get twenty four episodes to uh, to talk about that. So we'll see we'll see what happens. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, if they give it two seasons, then um, that that'll put it probably on pace with the uh, how Hanasaku Iroha went, which um, mm-hmm. it was you know probably going to be the right amount of episodes so that they don't have to rush through anything. Um, mm-hmm. So it doesn't feel slow either. So. Right. Um, moving on to the next segment, um, Happy Hour. Let's um, start it off with uh, Drew. So as you know, I've been um, watching Arrow Manga Sensei as well as Renai Bokun. Um, so let's start off by talking about uh, Arrow Manga Sensei. Um, episode three entitled Buck Naked Mansion and the Fallen Master, uh, which is very appropriate. Um, we, we saw her a little bit last episode. Um, Elf Yamada Sensei, um, I burped, excuse me. (laughs) Disgusting. (laughs) Right in my ears. Yeah, you like it. Um, no, so we had uh, Elf Yamada Sensei uh, over in her house. Of course, she moves next door to both uh, Sagiri and Masamune, the main characters, and is just going to be there for the rest of the time, I guess. Uh, but she's there buck-ass naked playing piano. Yeah, just and chilling. And we're like, okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> it kind of, I guess, tied into the whole, the, the next door house was cursed, and you can hear piano music mm-hmm. and blah, 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 blah. Um, but, Nothing you know, better so- than... Taking a bath and then going and playing piano buck naked. The, the inspiration <laughs> right. just flows. <laughs> okay, she's she's that, she's definitely got a little bit of Chunibyo going going on, but you know she's she's a cute girl, so uh, I, I'm okay with it. Um, but uh, like we said last week, the harem is definitely forming. Um, she starts off super sundere, you know, why are you looking at me while I'm naked, blah blah blah, and then she's inviting him into the house, you know, let's work together, let's have this collaboration, not necessarily collaboration, but let's work together, let's inspire each other, um, and then she eventually challenges him, you know, we're gonna write this short light novel, uh, whoever Eromanga Sensei deems uh, the winner is gonna, she's gonna be able, or they, because they don't know who it is, um, are gonna to do the art for their neck or stay with them to do the art so that's kind of an interesting uh, conflict that's developed um we they talk about the different writing styles uh elf Yamada is like you only have or you're only able to write when you're passionate about something or when uh, you're feeling the drive to write you can't just force mm-hmm. yourself to write and mm-hmm. i think that's super important for the main character masamune to realize even though he hasn't totally accepted it yet uh, it's important because a lot of his stuff isn't selling and a lot of his stuff isn't filled with passion, kind of like what she's talking about. And she's this successful, super successful um, light novel um, writer. And so I think he needs to take that to heart. Um, so maybe in the next couple episodes, we'll we'll kind of see that. I know you guys are watching this one as well. Do you have any input of uh, kind of what's going on? Anything yeah. like that? I think... Um how how she was saying that he should 
only right when he's motivated. I think that's going to be hard for him to accept going forward. Um, just Definitely. because as far as we know, um, sh- the elf Yamada sensei girl has it pretty easy because she's, you know, successful and she has money. So she doesn't have to write. Whereas he's like trying to support himself and his sister. And so he's doing this as to like make right. money for them. And so it's kind of a different situation. So he needs to get over over that and be like, well, if I don't write, then I won't make any money and we'll die. So it's, you know, it's going to be interesting to see that kind of conflict where where he, he right. I think I think only writes when he's motivated, but yeah. I, I think it's supposed to it's supposed to spur him to action. It's supposed to mm-hmm. help inspire him to become a better become a better writer. Yeah, because clearly, like you know, they have this rivalry between them. But like you can see, like he's a fan of her. He asks mm-hmm. her for a signed copy of her latest album um, volume of her of her novel, and um, she kind of has like this fondness for him. Where like obviously like she probably has feelings for him, but it's the blushy face. Yeah, like she she's yeah. trying to help him, and at the same time, um, kind of have like a an actual rival that she can, you know, like see as like someone she can compete with, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's what I was gonna ask. Do you think she has merit behind what she's saying, um, or not? I think so. Like it seems like she's doing she's doing this and like she wouldn't get really mad at him for, you know, for his statements about just writing just because if she didn't herself really believe that you have to be passionate about what you're doing. Yeah. And if she didn't in the smallest way care about him. So it's kind of clear that she has some, you know, care for him. I think it was after he told her that story about how, you know, she helped him when he was in that rough time. I think Mm -hmm. that was a big turning point for her with with uh how she thought about him i think it was already going that way but that was like you know the the, the click or whatever um yeah she's a smug character so. but i actually mm-hmm. liked the development they gave her like in the last mm-hmm. episode i thought she's just like all right she's gonna be another annoying good. lolly character but like she <laughs> she's actually like become a lot better in my book mm-hmm. yeah and she she offers good advice and i think i think she's gonna be a strong character moving forward i don't detest her like i did uh the first episode she showed up so i also I think, think she's gonna he, she, Go sorry ahead. oh i also <laughs> think that his the way the things he's been saying to her is gonna change how she writes because he keeps saying like the the vibe i'm getting he's like well the things you write he's basically saying the things she writes are kind of shallow so i think she might be like her things might become like even better and then definitely the i think they're going to test each other mm-hmm. and they're both going to get better as a result and we'll, we'll maybe see this collaboration i what mm-hmm. i think is going to happen they're going to do a collaboration Aromanga sensei sagiri is going to draw the pictures and they're both mm-hmm. going to get really famous off of it that's yeah. and it'll that's, be this huge that's where thing. right that's that's where i see it going um but you know we'll we'll see we'll see what ends up happening we'll but um <laughs> good episode i'm looking yep. forward to to the uh the next episode it's it's mm-hmm. a good series i i'm enjoying it um episode three of reinai bokun um entitled i can handle myself cross what's up um <laughs> we get we get new development of another character who is more than likely going to join this crazy like, you can call it a harem you can call it a kiss no whatever you want to call it uh but we meet aqua kiss um, no club. the main characters uh emoto his little sister and she i wrote in my notes is sundry as fuck um, <laughs> cannot accept her feelings for her brother her brother has saved her countless times when she's younger um she loves her brother but is just gonna be an asshole to him the whole time um so that's kind of what we get out of this uh mm-hmm. out of this episode um we also were introduced to a new uh, angel. Um, where is her name? It was um, Tiara. Um, and she's a Kogiaru, which was interesting. Um, if you don't know what that is, look it up. And uh, I warn you, it's uh, a little shocking, a little scary. But <laughs> uh, So we meet her. Um, the Death Note, or sorry, the Kiss Note burned up um, in one of the conflicts. And, um, you know, we're introduced to this new character, Tiara, and um, Giri is given a new death note or kiss note um, in order to fulfill her job. But another another random episode, I'm not going to really divulge much into it. It's kind of 
to me it's funny but i it's it's already starting to wear out it's welcome for me um it's just it's just gonna keep getting stale i mean this week to try to be funny they had a demon penguin who likes to <laughs> rape people or he wants to or marry he, the sister <laughs> and have like, babies with her yeah it's 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 interesting to say the least but not not as good as arrow manga for me um if i had to rate rate it now i would probably give it like a five um it's funny but it's 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 not really doing much for me i don't know what you guys think it it it's what i expected to be um yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of the same thing every week and i'm like well this is kind of what it is it's just one of those ones you watch when you're like i don't want to watch something serious that i have to think exactly. about or read into i'm just gonna watch it it'll make me chuckle and then i'll go on with my day <laughs> So, yeah, right. pretty much. All right, Alec, um, uh, what about your shows? Yeah, mine, I'm going to just, I'm going to go through them real quick because uh, first I'm going to start with Sword Oratoria. Um, there really isn't much to talk about. It's really just a background story right now for Ice uh, Valen- Valenstein um, and kind of her, her familia, the the Loki familia. They're just talking, going around, getting their stuff fixed and things like that. Um, there aren't really any big developments. Um it, it's kind of just her side of the story from what we already, you know, saw in the first season. Um, it, it, this second episode was hilarious. I was laughing through basically the entire thing. Um, it, but other than that, there really wasn't much going on. Um, Lefia, that's her name, right? She's cute in this Lefiria, episode. I think. Whereas, yeah, her, the, the, the mage who can't mage. Um, (laughs) from the first episode and like almost got a bunch of people killed. Yeah. She annoyed the hell out of me because I'm like, just say the, say the last word. All you got, come on. All you got to do is be like explosion. (laughs) Like just blow them up. Let's do it. But no, she's like, oh my God, I'm so scared. And then she fucking has to get saved by ice. And then she's all like baby about it. Anyways, she's cute in this episode trying to cheer her up. And uh, so it was a good episode. It was funny. I'm going to continue watching it, but I'm probably not going to talk about it going forward unless something big happens. Um, the other show I'm watching from this is, um, they call it Grimoire of Zero, uh, Maho No Show, Zero No Show, lots of different names. Um, it was good. There, there's a lot going on. I find it interesting. Um, there's the, the picture where they met someone from town. He said, I used to be a mercenary like you, but I took an arrow to the knee. So that was pretty (laughs) funny. (laughs) Um, and, uh. So, so I, I, I found that pretty funny. Um, it's got some good developments coming, um, with talking about different witches and, and, and things like that. Um, so I'm, I'm enjoying it. I think the story is going to get better as of right now. There isn't really much to talk about, but but like, you just kind of have to watch it. It's enjoyable. Um, I think there's more with other shows that I'm watching that I'd rather talk about. So I'll mention this one here and there, but, uh, not in depth. And then I'm just okay. going to quickly mention a couple other shows I've been watching. Hinako Note, really good. It's funny. It's cute. Um, I definitely suggest it. It's kind of like Renai Bokun. You don't have to think about it. You just got to watch and enjoy. I find myself kind of smiling, chuckling through the entire show. Uh, Clockwork Planet, it's funny. It's got good action. Um, they've got cute grills and a funny main character. Um, and the story seems like it's going to go a pretty good direction. Uh, it's, it's got some intrigue to it. And then Akashic Record of Bastard Magical Instructor, I've been watching that, and that one's been really fun to watch. Um, the, mm-hmm. the action has been good. It's gotten a lot The better. characters have been getting better, um, and the, the, um, the, the main character guy has an interesting backstory, so it'll be cool how they kind of go along with that. But I recommend all three. They're, they're all very good. Yeah, I've been liking Akashic, um, Record as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like, uh, the third episode has been, um, the for me the most, um, what's it called, intriguing. Because I just hate the name. The name is like so stupid. Dude, you gotta <laughs> get over superficial things like that and just yeah, yeah. Come on, Drew. <laughs> Don't be so shallow. <laughs> Who do you think you are, dude? You're not Elf Yamada Sensei, man. What 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 does Akashic even mean, bro? We don't know, dude. They <laughs> hey, they're, hey, hey, they're going to talk about it in the next episode. That's what they said. Hey, in the Drew. Preview. I've I've got I've got a suggestion for you. Google it. What's that? Oh, oh. <laughs> all right. Wrecked. All right. I see, I see how it is. All right. So uh, moving on to what I watched, um, I'm not going to cover 
too much about Saikano this week. There's not much um, to talk about since uh, neither of you two are watching it. Basically, they finish the manuscript for their game, and there's a lot of hijinks that go on with that. Um, I do want to briefly talk about Alice and Zoroku, which is a show I've been watching. I know Alec has been watching it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes. It's come off... It started off with a, a pretty good start. Um, it's, it's a long first episode. Yeah, it was, a, that it was like it. a two it's episode a feature or something. Yeah, it's like forty minutes. It's yeah. long. It 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 was interesting though. It's come. It's what you expect from a JC staff show. Very like a lot of like you know magic, um, and sort of like fantastic, uh, stuff in modern society kind of thing, and the mm-hmm. the main uh, the main like kind of grandpa character Zoroku is a uh, he's dope he's like a you know tough love like grandpa kind of character and he's, he's like, the coolest I, I enjoy, dude. yeah I enjoy his character a lot and Alice is um not out Al- I mean they're all like dreams of Alice is like these care these characters I hate crooked things um <laughs> and they basically favorite. have these powers that can manifest but the red queen Sana mm-hmm. she um has like the ability to basically create whatever she wants um in into reality and so she's She's basically god yeah she's like the main um conflict in the story between like these two organizations that are fighting over her and uh, it's been pretty interesting what did you think about it alec i've liked it so far um the story has kept me you know interested where they're gonna go with like who are these organizations and what are they you know they've kind of given us given us some insight in this most recent uh episode about what they want to do with her uh i know what is it the 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 group who just recently kidnapped her i hope you're up to date otherwise spoilers um they um they want to try and use her for an energy source and they're working with the american an american organization as well and then the other organization we really don't have any information about we just know that they are from japan and and that's all they kind of told us so it, it's definitely like keeping me interested it's it's got good uh good mystery behind all of it and uh the, i like the character so far i like the grandpa the grandpa is dope he's always like i don't like crooked things and he's like fighting the arms or whatever and the, he's dope um it's sauna right she's cool and yeah. uh the granddaughter is cool and so is the secret service chick who fights and saves her at the end of the episode so yeah i really like it so far and where it's going for me um, as long as be it's one. better than uh the w- how big order was um i'll i'll be happy because big order was kind of a disappointment in terms of uh <laughs> of what that was. And I mean, big order was, I think I believe was the same author of the, the index novels. So it was a kind of a disappointing yeah, big, anime in my big opinion. order was, was not good. It was not good. <laughs> it's not, it's it. not glass lit bad, but it's, it, it wasn't yeah. good. It, it was not, not on par it. with what I expect from like JC staff and, and their shows. Mm-hmm. Um, moving on from that, um, soccer Rider reset. um, this show has been very thought provoking in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Alec is watching it. Drew, I think you should definitely start watching this show. It's so a, worth yeah, watching. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start this week. It's a good show. In, in episode three, we get, let me pull this up. Um, we have a lot to talk about, but a lot, yeah. we're going to kind of shorten it down to what I want to talk about from it. And um, basically, a synopsis of what happens is Haruki and Kay get this request to save this cat that gets run over. And this other um, person, Murase, she is the one that sends a request. So they reset, go back, they start gathering information, and then they technically finish the request, but there's still answers that are like left unanswered. Um, questions, questions left unanswered. Sorry. <laughs> Answer answers left the, it, unquestioned. Yeah, it's it's the mondo <laughs> red. It's getting to me. Um, but they meet this character Nono, and uh, she has the ability to share information uh, with other things. And she specifically uses it with cats. And the way she does it is she sleeps and can 
tie into their five senses. So that's where they get mm -hmm. the information on how to save this cat. And, where it um, is. what I found very interesting from this is Kay has this conversation with Nono over the phone when she's trying to, you know, fall asleep. She calls him to be like, yeah, bore me to sleep essentially. Like, yeah, cause so she used her use power, power too much. So yeah. she couldn't. Yeah. And so she's like, um, you know, like talk to me. And so he's like, okay, well, if you were reborn, what would you become? And so she's like, okay, well, I would become a giant tree that could provide shelter and shade for all these cats. And then they can climb up on my branches and hang out and look at the stars and then sit on me with their poopy butts. Essentially. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then K his answer to her is Oh, well, you know what? I would become God and then I would erase all suffering in the world. I wouldn't put people through trials and tribulations. I would solve world hunger and all the pain and suffering. And so what I got from that was we've got two answers that have similarities in them, but also show like the differences in their philosophies. Mm -hmm. So Nono is like... She's this big tree, which is essentially like kind of the same thing as like a big deity for these cats, you know, like she's just there and provides a lot of things for them, shelter, um, a place to hang out, you know, comfort. And it's a very passive type of, you know, existence that benefits these cats. And that's kind of, you know, mirrored sorry <laughs> um <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of mirrored with um um with how how people view god in our world he's very hands off you know he's not he's not there to always like fix everything for everyone and then k's response is very intriguing because he says he would become god and basically solve everything make it so that there's nothing no suffering, nothing in the world. It's very hands-on. And I kind of feel like his answer, it's solidifying my like theory with K, is that he's very robotic. And like it's a very selfish answer in itself because he thinks, he believes it's righteous, but it's actually just meddling with, the, with like what's going on in the world. And if you erase something like, suffering and all of that to like create this artificial peace is it really solving pain and suffering at its source or is it really just limiting everything it like i kind of feel like if you do it that way it kind of takes away free will from humanity in itself because you know hu humans can choose to do whatever they want whether their decisions are morally good or bad and in his case, he wants to just eliminate suffering, not do any of the have anyone feel any pain or whatever. But like at the same time, you kind of pull away from what makes people human and kind of turns them robotic in a sense, if we want to get all philo philosophical and shit. <laughs> well, um, they did have that whole conversation in the first episode about who's an android and who's not and who would be the android. And in, in the end, it's he's probably the most robotic just because yeah, he wants this order. He wants to, like, you know, create this piece just if he could be God. He wants, he wants the world to fit in his idea of what an ideal world would be, not necessarily everyone else's. And it does, like, what you're saying, it's, it's selfish. It comes back to that other conversation they had in the first one, him and um, Soma the conversation they had about the guy who walks around doing good things for people all the time because basically it makes him feel good. He does mm -hmm. it because seeing people suffer makes him feel bad and he doesn't want to feel bad. So he helps these people. And then they take a clone of this guy who does good things for people. But the only reason he does good things for people is because he's the clone of the guy. Right. And yeah. so he does it because that's just what he does. He's so programmed. it's completely selfless. And so I kind of saw those two things as, K was the guy who does it because he doesn't want to see suffering. He doesn't want to see people, you know, like hurt because it, he feels bad if he sees that or if he doesn't help him or whatever. And then the tree, she's just kind of, I do good things. I'm just a tree. 
you know, like I, right. they're being helped by it because of what I am. It's not like a self selfish thing. She's not like, oh, well, I want to be surrounded by cats. So I'll be a tree. She's like, I just want to sleep and be a tree. <laughs> so it's it, that I kind of saw it as a, a parallel to that conversation they had in the first episode. Right. And then what did you what did you think about? Because like tying into all of this, um, Haruki mentions that Kay doesn't really like to like mess up the mess future up or change the, things you mess up the past yeah to, like too much because like you would create like some sort of butterfly effect because we do mm-hmm. have the fact that they reset in the previous episode they reset his kiss with haruki mm-hmm. and somewhat like whether it's somehow related or it was already like in the plans already but soma dies at the end of that episode yeah. like are the things they're doing con- like are there these big consequences that are a result of an equilibrium being reached from them changing the past like because soma dies and then coming in the episode preview and like we see at the end of the episode his classmate minami is dead like mm-hmm. or i mean we assume is dead because right. she's, she's floating over she's floating her ghost. spirit's floating <laughs> above him yeah. on the where we where we end the episode, which is w- like the time that the Saturday where the episode began. So it's kind of an interesting idea. Like w- are, is what they're doing actually harmful? And in, in a sense, because there's gotta be some sort of balance that's dictated it's, between yeah. them changing. I something. think that like, he's trying his hardest not to change the past because he's recreating all the conversations he had in class to, like, his best ability. But he did make that one change when he asked her to go look for the MacGuffin mm-hmm. that was referenced by the person on the phone. That was a change he made. The conversation about the hand, that was brought up purely on its own because they reset and it's a new conversation that mm-hmm. was had. But when he went ahead and um, mentioned the MacGuffin and asked about it, he made that change. So I think by him making that change, it created a new, you know, a new timeline that happened with the Minami Minami girl. And she possibly ended up dead because she was asking questions about this MacGuffin, which the person he talked to on the phone, um, I forget their name. Uh, um, he, Hitsuchi, Hitsu, Hitsuchi, Hitsuchi, I Something think like so, that. mentioned that she can't talk about, she's like, I can't talk about that, you know, and he was like, well, what is that? And it's like, if you don't know, it's, you know, don't worry about it, basically. And then he goes and asks her to ask about it, and then she ends up dead. So I think <clears throat> despite, you know, like there is, there is some sort of equilibrium, but it's, it's when he makes, you know, changes to, to things yeah. and, and stuff I like that. I think it's also but, tied in with this Minase character who put in the initial request and was eavesdropping on them when they initially talked to Nono before they reset. So it's like Mm -hmm. whether she is somehow keeping her memory as well and is affecting stuff and like whether she's the one that yeah, she was behind that conversation you're talking about with the Mm handhole in the wall, like whether she's the cause of that. Yeah. Right. Well, there's a lot to talk about with this show, but um, there's, (laughs) and there's not enough time. But um, I don't I don't know if we want to talk about this now, but going forward, do we want to maybe dedicate more time to not only this show, uh, Sakura Reset, but as well as like Arrow Manga? I think that's the two that everybody are kind of watching. I definitely yeah, think we I need definitely to think we need set to up more that. time. Um, yeah. Um, what we can do is some for of my sure, shows I'm going to cut out. So we're going to save yeah. time on those. What we can do is for the pairing, we can um have like this set of four shows and then cover like one or two of them in the pairing and then you know briefly talk about the rest in the in happy hour because i'm not going to cover too much about sai kano at all um maybe a little bit mm-hmm. allison's roku so yeah allison's yeah. roku i think we'll have moments where it'll be uh have some good things to talk about so it could take up some time but not every time yeah zero no show sword oratoria hinako no clockwork planet not really gonna have much to talk about every week they'll have their moments where i'll mention it and it'll take maybe you know two minutes akashic record more so than those but really not that much as well yeah same with same with renee bokun um but i think there's just more material to talk about aero manga and uh sakura to reset going mm-hmm. forward so yeah we'll we have, have an hour too. long conversation yeah. about sakura to reset so, so plan wanted. plan on that uh, in the future guys yeah. um and we'll kind of kind of go from there well uh 
I think that should bring uh, this episode to a close, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, reviewing what we talked about today, we talked about the Lagunitas Lucky 13 Red Ale. It is a very great beer. Um, I'm actually thinking of increasing my rating to a four after having drank through the whole thing for this episode. Um, it is very, very smooth, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Goes down easy. Yeah, goes down easy. Um, in terms of how you want to follow us, we can upload this onto iTunes and YouTube, where you can find us at Anime on Draft. And as well, we have a Twitter anime on draft soundcloud anime on draft and you can go to our wordpress anime on draft.wordpress.com where we will have links to all of our social media as well as a nice little button that says subscribe to itunes you can click on that subscribe to our podcast and get weekly updates we like to try and get these episodes out monday evenings tuesday mornings Um, we're also on facebook we are Facebook also on well. Facebook if you would like to like us there. And if you don't use Twitter. Um, we have an Instagram. So, Alec, yes. you should be posting uh, pictures for this beer um, yes, I will. fairly shortly today, correct? Yep, right after we finish recording this episode. And again, feel free to send us suggestions and all that stuff. Um, we look at the WordPress, I think, the most. So feel free to drop us a line there. Um, give suggestions for beers, um, what you think about the shows and all that good stuff. So The contact goes straight to the email. So anything you guys send to us, uh, we'll see right in our email inbox and get to it. So Awesome. Please use and it. so um, as we bring this episode to a close, I would like to give you a sneak preview of next week. Drew will be our host. Um, so look forward to that. Look forward to it, guys. (laughs) All right. Don't really. Have a good day. Later on. See you later.